All right, are we recording? Good. Hey, what's up, Moto Buddies? This is Mike from Baja Taco Tours and Taco Moto Co. Coming to you live from the taco shop Skunk Works. And I want to answer some questions that I get most often. This is like clearly the number one question that I'm texted, emailed, phone called, it's on the boards, whatever. And it's about engine management. So tuning, engine management, we're going to go through the products that are used to uh, get you there. Uh, some of the ins and outs and the advantages of each one. So I'm going to use this cheat sheet. This is what I'm going to be going off of. I'll post a link to this up in this YouTube section so you can see all this data. But basically, it's a breakdown of each one of these little engine management devices. So let's start off with your stock ECU. So what we have here is the stock Kahin engine management uh, ECU that's on your bike. Whether you have a two-stroke or four-stroke, if it's fuel-injected, you have one of these little guys. It's a computer that runs all the sensors, the inputs and the outputs, and then it, it, it uh, takes that sensor data and runs it through the map and makes fuel management and ignition cycle decisions based on the input sensors. So how the map works is it's just a grid. It's a spreadsheet that's inside of this uh, computer and it's got a, a TPS column and then a RPM column. And so if you're at a particular throttle opening at a particular uh, RPM, range then the computer asks the sensors for its data regarding say like mat uh the um uh, air so some of the sensors you have are coolant temperature and then a ambient air temperature and then a manifold absolute air pressure sensor so it's taking that data and then it's running it through the map and it's making a modified decision so it's not taking the true um, x and y of the tps and throttle position well, the RPM data, it's not taking that raw data and then sending out information to the uh, coil and the fuel injector. It's going to it's going to run. It's going to filter that output through the data um, from the sensors and then make a calibrated decision about what your ignition timing should be and what your fuel pulse width should be on the on the fuel injector. So that's what's happening in the map and the computer, this little ECU guy, this is reading the data from the sensors and then it's sending out the electrical signals to the coil and to the um, fuel injector. So everything is happening in this box. This is the magic box. This is the brain of your system. Everything is decided here in this box. So your stock map has some advantages and disadvantages. The stock ECU has those. So what you get with a stock uh, some of the advantages, it is fully submersible. You can put this underwater on your bike and it won't damage it in any way. You, um, d there's no user inputs and then you um, don't have to spend anything. So to run this box, exactly that is, you don't have any added cost to your already sunk cost of buying your bike as it is. Some of the disadvantages are you really can't make any mods. So if you've got like the 17 plus injected bikes, the four stroke bikes that have the reed cage, if you pull that out, you throw the baseline pre-programmed fuel map out of whack and so your bike is running lean. It was already lean anyway and now it's more so. Um, if you take off your stock can and you throw on a slip-on, you're lean. If you knock out the end plug, you're lean. If you do anything to modify your bike in any way, you're lean. Um, and so you're really locked in. Now, let me make one small comment about something I get a lot of questions about, and that's a TPS hack. So guys will say, oh, I see this YouTube video, and it says you can tweak out or bump up your TPS, and that'll add more fuel, which it does. But it is not a calibrated amount of fuel, and it also changes the ignition curve. So you're essentially tricking your bike. Here's what's happening. You're fooling your bike into thinking that your throttle plate is open more, 4%, 5%, 6% more than it really is. And so because there's more air flowing in, then the, the management system thinks that you need more fuel. And so it's artificially increasing or richening up or adding more fuel to the actual throttle position. And um, it does make your bike run a little richer, but it is a, um, uh, it's a, in my opinion, and look, if you ask any of the tuners out there, any of the reputable guys, if that's a valid way to do it, they'll tell you, no, it's not. Are there plenty of dudes out there that are running that with a pipe and the reeds out and they say, oh, I love it, my bike runs better, sure. Um, but if they throw that on a dyno, if they look at the air fuel ratios, they'll see that there's so much room on the table for improvement with the additional heat load and demand that you, um, you know, running it lean is a problem with maybe a few exceptions. Now, um, 
I'll just throw this out there. If you have a very stock bike and you're running in it generally ambiently, ambiently, making up words, if you're running in an area that's that has typically cooler ambient temperatures, then you know I'll hold my nose and say maybe that's fine. You can do that. But if you've got a modified bike, and especially if you run in any heat, like in the southwest, or you put a high demand on your bike, lots of sand, lots of really hard riding, aggressive riding, then you're going to potentially run into engine durability problems in the long run. So no reputable tuner is going to recommend that. Nobody will tell you to do that. That's sort of a hack that's floating around out there. Um, we don't do that here at the taco shop. And, and if I ever find a bike that has that's all they're running for engine management, fuel management. We try to steer them into some other direction. And, and look, you're not spending a lot of money to get away from the TPS tune as your only um, option. Um, and so we'll get into those in just a second. So your um, probably the next step up in the ladder might be in terms of like cost and then performance would be um, to remap or reflash your stock box. So there's plenty of guys out there that are kind of on the down low that you can send this to and they will do a reflash. They will put something known as the Euro map in here. The Euro map is essentially a map that's pretty pretty similar in calibration to what like the old XCW maps were back in the day in the 12 through 16 bikes before they went to the 50 state legal 17 plus EXCF bikes. And it is richer in the lower speed circuits, but it thins out up high and you kind of run into the same problems that you do with the stock map. And um, look, Euro, the Euro map is uh, a regulated map too. It's not like Europe doesn't have any emissions regulations. They do. There's a Euro 4 standard that, that bikes up to this point have met. So it's ain't a wide open thing. Um, but what you do get, so there are some advantages. One of them is cost. You probably are looking at about a hundred bucks to send your stock box to some of these guys who will reflash them to the Euro tune. Again, the Euro tune is gonna be lean for some modification schemes that you're gonna do on your bike. So it plugs a hole, but then you still have a few leaks uh, otherwise with it. So it's not the final solution, but what it is, is it's a like a bridge to get you to a custom tune. So if you unlock or hack or jailbreak this stock box with the Euro map, then you can send that to this, maybe the same guy can do this for you, or maybe it's a different guy, but he can reflash Put this box on the on the UST, which is the KTM user setting tool, reflash it with like a map he's developed, so ignition and fueling profiles that he thinks are hot, the way to go for your particular bike. And so that will add tons of performance and usability. And again, you maintain the stock box. So if you're inclined to think that this is really the way to go because of reliability, waterproof, some of the features, guys just there's guys out there who like the comfort, peace of mind, knowing that they don't have an aftermarket box on their bike, any aftermarket parts, then then this is probably the direction you'd wanna go. And you might be into this total for maybe less than 300 bucks. So maybe 100 bucks for the jailbreak and then 150 to 200 for a custom tune that somebody's gonna to wanna to put in there. And it's all just software. All you're doing is you're paying somebody for their knowledge and their time. Um, they're not changing any of this hardware. It's all software. Um, but they deserve to be compensated for their efforts and so you're probably going to spend 250 to 300 bucks to have that done um, so some of the other advantages are you're 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 absolutely improving on modifying the fueling which you'll feel in the throttle and then you are changing the ignition too which also is noticeable and so you have bumped up those two vectors in this uh, box and now you're running you know something that some race teams swear by so Great option, um, and that's probably all I'll say about that. Now, if you want to go to an aftermarket component, and so this would be an add-on, so let's take a scenario. Let's take a guy who has his stock USA 50-state EPA-approved map, and he doesn't want to send this box out to anybody. He doesn't want to do that, uh, but he needs more fuel because he wants to do a pipe, or he wants to leave things fairly stock, but wants to get rid of that cough and stall flame-out issue that the lean coffin stall situation you know we have with these EXCF bikes and the FEs and so what you could do there is you could add onto your system one of these little guys this is the um, Dobek EJK so this little box right here is a piggyback plug-and-play tuner made by a company out of uh, Belgrade Montana Dobek Engineering 
these guys uh, came up with the, the software and this little piece of hardware and you might be familiar with this exact piece of technology if you have bought one of these from FMF or JD or uh, uh, I know Polaris sells something. There's, they're branded by uh, names like Power Card and uh, Power Tuner. There's all kinds of guys selling these under all kinds of names with all kinds of different stickers on the front. They are made by this guy, Dobek, out of Montana, and they are all called the EJK. This is this is the device. So this is the patient zero right here. This is this is the device, and then everybody else puts a different sticker on it. Um, and so we like to get ours from the source, not an aftermarket supplier. Uh, this is the OE guy, and so there's a set of values that you would plug in. So basically these lights here will flash you have uh, calibrated values of like one through eight one through nine yeah one through eight and so you plus and minus adding and taking away fuel at five different preset throttle positions and um and so you oh and there's a six so there's really six fueling circuits here the sixth one is the accelerator pump so like with the old fcr carbs or any pumper carb you have that uh richening jet hit when you really crack the throttle you get the same thing electronically here and so basically all this is doing is just like changing jetting in your old school carb bike we're adding fuel at preset levels based on whatever values we program into here and it's all user configurable you can even change this in the field if you um, need to do that and that's i can help walk you through that if you have questions about that um, so you are increasing or decreasing the injector pulse width on your bike that's all you're doing so just conceptually think of like jetting if you up your jet size from a 172 to 174 uh, you change your needle clip position you do some of those mods that you used to do with carbs to get more fuel into your bike you're doing the exact same th thing here electronically and so to get more gas we have to increase the injector pulse width the on time of the injector itself and this little guy interrupts the circuit from the ECU. So the ECU is sending an electrical pulse to the injector, the on signal. It's pulsing on and off, on and off, really fast, hundreds of times a second. And so what this does is it interrupts that signal, and then based on the values you've plugged into it, it's, it's adding time. It's not adding voltage. It's not changing the map. We're not changing the ignition either. All we're doing here is we're adding on time to the injector which is effectively just more gas. It's like upping the jet size in a car bike. So this little guy right here costs, the retail on this is fairly inexpensive. I think um, the price has gone down. So 249 is the retail, but I think we sell these for like 220 or something like that. Um, and this device has those advantages of leaving your bike very stock, but just adding on this little component. Failure rate in these are basically zero. We've never seen one go bad, but it could. If it ever failed, your bike wouldn't run, theoretically. Um, it could fail outright, and if it did, you would unplug by just taking off this little ground wire, which depowers it. So it gets its power. It's powered from the ECU. And if you essentially unplug it by taking off the ground strap, then this thing is off, and then your bike will run like normal. So the fail-safe workaround, if this thing completely um, takes a dump outright, is just unplug it by taking off the ground strap. And so you're not going to be stranded. And so you've added a component to add fuel, but it will not strand you. And you have a workaround if you do. Uh, it's very inexpensive. It's very easy to program. And these are probably the number one seller that we have and the most popular way to up the fuel on your bike. And so you're looking at a very inexpensive, very reliable, very easy to use device that gets you what you need. So um, uh, that's probably all I have about this guy. Now, if you wanted to take... Um, a real big leap and get into something that was going to be a direct replacement for your ECU and here's the magic allow you to tune the fuel at very finely calibrated amounts and then have some user configurability and then the holy grail would be change ignition you're going to need to replace your ECU you need an aftermarket ECU because um, the, unless you have this reflashed by somebody with the UST that user setting tool you cannot change any of the ignition points in this yourself someone else has to do it if you're using the stock box but if you use a complete replacement ECU like this little vortex guy this comes this particular one the X10 comes with 10 so this dial right here allows you to select from 10 different 
engineered maps created by these vortex guys these guys out of australia have dyno tuned a bike a particular whatever model so this one happens to be for the 12 through 16 500 and 501s and so these vortex guys in australia put your bike put this bike on a dyno and then have developed different maps which they then put on this dial switch at one th is it one through ten or zero through nine yeah zero through nine and so there's 10 maps in here and you can click through these settings to pick one of those maps and run your bike on it. And so that particular map is essentially what happens here. So really theoretically, if you calibrated this, if a guy reflashed this with a custom map, he's changed fuel and ignition, which is no different than what's happening on one of these dial settings. Somebody has programmed into here a new map that changes fuel and ignition. Maybe the difference here is that on this guy, you can pick different ones. If I have a custom tuner do this one, I'm limited by just the one he put in here. But here I have up to 10 different options. And so that's a big feature. Then you've got these three little dials here and these let you select fuel trim. So you can add or take away fuel. You can add up to 30% over whatever, whatever Vortex put in here for the fueling for this particular map. If you want to or need to, you can add up to 30% more at the low, med middle, medium, and then high throttle range settings, or take it away 10% under. So you can get a total fuel sweep range of 40% by uh, clicking these little dials. Here, you have no user uh, modifications. You can't change it. Whatever that tuner put in here, that's what's in here. Can't select anything else, can't make any changes. If you needed to change any of these settings, you'd send this back to the guy and he, he, he you would like a suspension tuner. So think of this as no different than you have your suspension built by a guy and then he set it up a particular, a particular way. You don't like it or you wanna tweak it, you have to have him crack it open and then get back into the internals. Same thing's going on here. And then with this guy, you get that usability where you can make those changes yourself. So that's, Kind of what's going on in the difference here so if you look at this dial right here this 10 position dial this is where you change and select from the pre-designed maps that the vortex guys have installed in here and they have different names different uses um, one of them is the stock map just the basis base map same thing you have in your stock ecu so um, you can read the instructions and go through those and see which one you think is the most suitable some of them are going to be kind of off limits for a stock guy because they need race gas and they're for like modified motors um, but you get you end up getting three or four maps that are probably usable for most guys. And in fact, really, most guys set it to one, and then they'll set these at about five. That is the typical, you know, kind of no-fuss Vortex setup. Tends to be a little bit on the rich side, which is sort of a fail-safe, and that's fine. That's not a real big deal. Um, you can take this to a dyno shop, and they will, if they have the available... Uh, Vortex software utility they can pull so one of these is for the map switch we'll talk about that in a second and then one of these is the programming switch so they could put your bike on a on a dyno plug this into the software utility and they could make fine calibration changes to the fuel and ignition and then upload that data back into the map and so that will optimize your performance fueling and performance and so that's really the holy grail of how to do any of these ECUs and you could do the same thing here uh, with this so you could take your bike to a guy who had the UST tool on a dyno and he could absolutely optimize the performance capabilities of your bike running this box you can do the same thing here um, and that's really if you have the resources and the ability to do that that's kind of the ultimate way to go otherwise you're getting a map that is generally and generically designed and optimized to just really nail the specs of your bike there might be some parameters that are different. Every motor is different. And so while they ran those tests and set this up on a, the particular bike that they did, they tried to generalize that and spread out its sweep and its ability to sort of wrap its arms around uh, other bikes that are super similar. So there's a little fudge factor, plus and minus, trying to in, in, encompass the capabilities of different bikes, yours, mine, everybody else's, that are the same model, the same bike with some of those same mods, they're trying to cover those bikes. And so the plus and minus uh, capabilities are 
not exactly spot on for your particular machine. So again, if you need that, want that, if your OCD level is pretty high or you're in racing or you just want max performance, you'll need to run this through a dyno and make those fine tunes. So this other uh, little pigtail here is for a map switch. So what's happening with the map switch on this is it allows you to toggle in between two different maps. So if you plug in the map switch, then automatically this thing is gonna run map one on map position one, and then whatever you put here for the switch will be on map two. That's what you get with map two. So position one is always map one. Position two is one through 10, or zero through nine, rather. That's how you toggle in between the two maps. And so there is no traction control. So let's talk about traction control. That's a question I get all the time. The non-US bikes have a map, uh, map switch like Australia and European, other country bikes have that map switch. And you're toggling between what KTM calls the power map and the soft map. Basically what's happening there is you've got the unrestricted, whatever that first map profile is, I think it's map two is the wide open map, and then one is the soft map. Map one is just sort of a wet blanket version of uh, map two, the power map. So that is to say, they interpret if you have less power available, less fuel, less ignition, you're less likely to spin the back wheel, that's traction control. And uh, Vortex kind of interprets that the same way. You could select map one. If you put the map switch on, your map one is that hot map. And then map two would be, you could select like a softer map. They have a couple of profiles that are kind of enduro, uh, you know, just less, uh, less intense maps. And that could be theoretically called traction control. And, you know, for all intents and purposes, I guess it is. But when we get to the GET, ECU, the Athena GET, we'll, we'll talk about how they do it quite differently. Um, so cost on this little guy right here is $6.99 retail. The map switch is a add-on accessory at $69, so you're at $770 if you go all in. If you get the software package, I don't have the price, you know, so, okay, check that out. You need the software and the cable. So if you're an at-home guy, man, I think I calc that out one time and it's like 900 bucks. Don't get me wrong. If you, if you, if you know what that cost is of the, of the cable and the utility, put that in the comments. But maybe it was, maybe it was $900 Australian dollars and I didn't down convert that. Um, anyway, it gets spendy. So you're, you're sinking a couple of bucks into this. Also, look at this. If you're going to get a user setting tool for, for this guy, unavailable. KTM doesn't make it anymore. So there's a couple of guys in the U.S., and uh, if you message me, I'll tell you who they are, who can crack this for you, who can Euroflash this for you, and then who can custom map this for you. Those are guys who have that kind of old-school KTM UST user setting tool. And so you're paying them for their knowledge, their experience, their time, and then the fact that they have that tool. When you go to a dyno, same thing. Somebody had to buy the cable, buy the utility, master it. They have the dyno equipment and so on. So if you're a super duper DIY guy, you can buy all that stuff or find somebody to do it for you. So the advantages here of this Vortex is it um, allows you to have a map switch, which the stock box does not. Theoretically allows for something called traction control. It's a full replacement ECU. Also with that software utility, you can do data logging. So if you're in a race setting, you can, you can record um, all kinds of metrics and vectors coming out of the, the data stream coming out of this. Um, what else do you get here? It has that, that software suite. This, is, this theoretically is a plug and play box. You just pop it in and then um, uh, you don't need any user, you know, other than setting here whatever map you want. And then if you want to change these field trims, a lot of guys will leave them at zero. Some bikes, and I put this on my bike and got some decel popping at zero. Um, on the low speed, which I think is this guy right there, the first one. Yeah, this guy right there. So I had to dial in. I think I had to put it up to about five to get rid of that decel lean pop situation, which is no big deal. Um, so these are almost plug and play. For most guys, they will be. If you do have to make any changes, they're very minor. And what else do you get with this guy? It does allow for user setting and user reconfiguration. It allows for field tuning. Um, you are able to change the red line. There is an automatic increase in the RPM red line here on this box when you plug it in over stock. So you've bumped up your red line. 
and your uh, check engine light will flash as normal. There's a different set of code values though, and there's a cheat sheet in the instructions that will tell you what those are. Um, the one thing that I would mention is these little dials are probably waterproof-ish. Um, I have never submerged one of these. I would think if you're gonna be doing some extreme enduro and know that you're gonna dump your bike in the water, you probably wanna figure out some way to overtape these with some sort of waterproof situation. Um, that could be a concern. So I know it's washproof, it's splashproof, it's rainproof. Is it submersible? I, I don't know. I've never really had anybody tell me that it is, um, but I would tend to think that you'd want to do something just in case. So that's kind of the rundown on the, <clears throat> the Vortex. Let's jump over to the Get. So this mess right here looks more intimidating than it is but this is the get ecu so let me just kind of describe each component in turn right here we've got the ecu box this is your replacement box that you would put in your bike changing out your stock box this again is like a plug and play device um, your stock wiring loom harness goes right here you have flying leads for a couple of accessories this little guy right here, barometric pressure sensor. So let's jump into the features of the GET. What you get here is a, a box that is submersible. This thing is all weather. Um, it has a map switch. I'm just gonna, well, let's do this. Let's run down these features. So you get a map switch included in it. Um, this is just part of the kit. This allows you to toggle between two different maps. So this is a two map box that you um, pre-program in. So like if you buy these from me, um, like, for example, uh, I've got this one set up where map one is ludicrous mode. That's just the balls out, wide open, full on kind of a race map um, for this particular setup. And then number two down here is the enduro map. And that has a softer profile, softer fueling, softer ignition hit. Um, this is what you'd ride off road or enduro. It's not going to rip your arms out and um, allows you a little more fine tune of the rear wheel when you're um, in an off-road situation. But here's also, let me talk about this, since we're kind of talking about the rear wheel. This box allows you to have real traction control. Um, data processed TC. So the big bikes have this. Honda's got this on the Africa Twin. KTM's got this. And so what this box allows you to do is, and I'll grab this little accessory right here. This is a you you don't need this but well let me not get ahead of myself so um, I can program traction control into this box in either one of the maps at a level of 0 through 10 and most guys will have this set up so that map 1 this ludicrous mode has no traction control we put it down here on 2 how it works is it is looking at the throttle position data and the engine RPM it knows your engine speed because of the coil uh, the way, um, you know, the timing of the coil, it, it can calculate RPM. So RPM and throttle position. This thing learns over time as you ride your bike what throttle position equals what RPM. And so because it doesn't have a gear selector, there's no gear input on our dirt bikes into this. So it doesn't know per gear what your throttle and speed outputs are, engine outputs are, but it will average that and then make a determination. And let's say it, it calculates that for easy numbers, 3,000 RPM is 30% throttle. If you then have a spike of 4,000 RPM, it, you're in wheel spin. So this thing will automatically pull away power, take away some fuel and some ignition, and get the rear wheel back into control. And then once those numbers align again, then it'll reapply, it'll softly reapply power. And so it's, it's fine tuning, it's pulling away and giving it back as needed in wheel spin once you get out of the predetermined calculation. And the value of the number being zero through 10 allows you to then shrink that window. So if you're at zero, it's not on, traction control is off. If you're at 10, let's say that it's 10% uh, width, the band of the influence of the traction control at, so again, if it's 3000 RPM, uh, at 30%, let's say I put this at 10, then maybe I'm only allowing like a 50 to 100 RPM spread away. If I go up, uh, like say, I, I don't know the actual numbers, but let's say it goes 100% above or 100 RPM above, now you're in wheel spin. If I click it down to nine, maybe that's 200 RPM. If I click it to eight, it's 300 and so on. So you can find, oh, I've sort of crossed wires here. 
Yeah, so you get the switch. This is an optional add-on switch that is a, uh, a dial indicator that allows you to plug in or tell the traction control um, feature at what level you want that control to be, zero through 10. If you do not have this, then I have authority over the TC, whether it's in there or not, and then what value. It lives in here and it's not user configurable. Again, most guys want map one with, without it, and then they want map two as like their dirt off-road enduro map, and they want it there. And splitting the difference, we put it at five most of the times. Can you feel it at five? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Does it do a good job? It absolutely does. Um, it makes hill climbs easier if you're riding in snotty conditions, sand starts. There's all kinds of conditions where TC makes you more confident, less fatigued, better rider. Um, it is an electronic cheat. You know, they ban this in Supercross. A lot of forms of racing do not allow electronic um, rider aid because it helps the rider. It helps it. you have faster lap times. This box with this setup on a Supercross bike will give it faster lap times. It doesn't matter who the rider is. It doesn't matter if the rider says, oh, I, you know, I'm a super experienced rider and I do all my throttle control with the right hand. Well and good, that's fine. But this guy right here um, is magic. It's totally magic, it's voodoo. So again, to drop back, um, if you do not have this, then I have authority or the programmer has authority over how much on which map, one or two, and then at which level, zero through 10. If you needed to change it, um, I can email you, map position number two allows me to email you a new map through the Wi-Fi box, which we'll get to in a quick second. And so I can email you a map, you can put that on your phone, and then you can data link that into here and you can change map two. Map one is not uh, updatable via the app. You can make fuel and ignition overlay changes, but you're not changing the base data for map one. Um, it's sort of protected as a fail safe. So you can't screw it up and you can't have a bike that you can't run. But map two is completely open. You can um, you can erase it and then upload a new map. So what, what that could look like is um, we set this up with TC5 on here and you want more. And so I could send you a new map, just changing TC from five to 10. And then you could upload it in here and now it's it's there and it's that set value remember whatever you program into here it's set not user configurable but if you add this little guy on here and plug it in then it overrides whatever value was already pre-programmed so if you had map 2 at 10 and i plug this in it just forgot it erase it doesn't erase it but it ignores the preset value of 10 because it now follows whatever value i put in here and this allows me user authority over TC into both maps. So now um, I have my ludicrous mode at one with no TC, but I got this on here. It's a rainy day and I'm, I'm running super motor tires. I'm going to work and it starts to drizzle. Um, I can just click this up to 10. Um, and then as soon as it's dry, I can take this back down to zero. And if I am gonna take that bike, throw some dirt tires on it and then ride with the boys for the weekend, I can click this over to map two and we're gonna go out in the mud and uh, I wanna, you know, like just kill on my buddies, my ride buddies, and, and I, I just wanna have all the TC I can get. I can dial this up to 10. We got a hard pack, I can put it to zero. We're on a fire road, it's at zero because I wanna swing the rear end around. I'm somewhere in the middle of terrain, I wanna put this to five. And so I have user authority over TC with this versus having it pre-programmed and locked otherwise. So that's what you get with this guy. Um, retail cost on this, I think, is like 149 I think we run, and, and these are retail prices on the site. We have some discounts, so we have some user uh, or some discount codes available depending on, you know, if you're in some ride groups and everything. So we try to help you guys out with the cost of these things. But I think 149 is the retail on this guy. You do not need this. We can put TC in here otherwise, but this gives you control and authority over that. Um, and then we've got the box here, the map switch, the retail on this kit. Oh, let's talk about Wi-Fi. Let me tell you the cost on this. So this whole little setup right here, this is what you get. And the retail is $8.99. <clears throat> this is called the Get RX1 Pro Kit. All these little uh, bits and bobs come in there. And um, if you're looking at the price comparison, it's $6.99. So let's round up. It's 700 bucks for the Vortex. It's 900 bucks for this. And it's 70 bucks for the um, map switch on the Vortex. So to compare these direct, head-to-head, -head, 
770 bucks for a vortex, 900 bucks for the get. That's your that's your raw cost if you go all in. And then if you with the traction control, that's another 150 bucks. So there's your numbers. Now, what is this little guy? This is the Wi-Fi box. So this talks to the app on your phone, the power, uh, what the heck does Get call it? The Y-Get, W-I-G-E-T app, lives on your phone. This happens to be the same setup that Yamaha, the hardware is different, uh, the interface is a little different, but Get Athena developed with Yamaha in conjunction with Yamaha, the Power Tune app, the Yamaha Tune app that you get with the motocross bikes from Yamaha. This is all the same equipment. So if you're running, uh, if you're familiar with the, how Yamaha does it and you jump over to this guy, this box, you're already um, uh, familiar, you're already dialed in. So you put the app on your phone, you could talk to this. Why would you want to do that? You might want to make fuel and ignition changes. Um, you can do that on the app. There's diagnostic codes in here. You can see those on the app. If your bike is running poorly, you can talk to this. We can look at the data and then you can uh, uh, try to figure out what's wrong with your bike based on trouble codes, sensor data. If you don't know what any of that stuff means, you can screen grab that, email it to me, text it to me, and I can help you interpret what might be going on in your bike and, and help you figure out what's broke and how to fix it. Um, you can update the firmware in, in the app and the ECU from your phone. You can upload new maps on that map position number two. Let's say, for example, you, um, I don't know, you're going to start writing trials and you want a really, really soft power delivery and you want to customize your ignition and fueling profiles really, and, and also fine tune. So one thing I'll say is on the app, you can make fueling and ignition changes. You're doing it in like 2000 RPM increments. So you're changing the fuel in a block that if I'm going to sort of define it visually, let's say you're going to change it in a, in a byte that's like this big. If you do it in the in the, the Maya software and the Vortex software or the Athena software, then you can get a micro slice. You can make those calibration changes in a really micro level instead of a bigger, broader level. So when you twist a dial on the Vortex and you like increase the fuel one click, you're probably changing it in a big bite. And so you'll feel that in the throttle, but it will not be it will not be like magically crisp. But if you do that on the Vortex in the software, then you can do that in like a little micro bite. You can do it in like 200, 500 RPM slices, 2%, 3, 4, 5% slices on the throttle position. So this is very similar to that. If you make fueling changes, you're doing it in sort of a bite like that. But there is an advantage to the get, and that is it allows user configurability that you can see where it's happening on the fuel side and the ignition side. You don't get to change ignition like that on the get. This is the only box out there. Some of the exclusive things. This is the only box that has real data-driven traction control. It's the only one that gives you Wi-Fi. It's the only one that has a barometric pressure sensor. Um, uh, there might be a few others, but those are the real big ones. Those are the massive ones. Oh, one other thing I'll say is computer speed. So nobody will give you, in writing, any of these processor speeds and make comparisons. However, I have talked to a bunch of guys and know anecdotally and kind of cross verified this information that the processing speed of this box is the fastest of any, um, this is faster than the stock computer and this is faster than the Vortex. So we're talking about a computer, just the processing power alone on this is the fastest of any of the other options you can go with. Um, I'm not, I probably won't tell you on a video what I've heard the processing speed differences to be, but I will, I will just say that this is, without a doubt, the quickest computer you're going to put on your bike. And I will also say that performance-wise, you will feel that. You will feel the amount of connectedness to the uh, mechanical grip throttle with this box that feels like a ride-by-wire system that is sharper and finer with a more precise hit than either the stock or the Vortex. It's something that you can feel at your right wrist, and it's pretty surprising and shocking and impressive. So there are a couple of those features, like I mentioned, that you get with the Get that you don't get on any of the other boxes. Kind of exclusive to this guy. There's a price premium. You're paying for that. If you need all the bells and whistles, this is all the bells and whistles. None of the other options have you know all the, all the tricks up the sleeve like this guy does. Uh, comes at that price, though. There's a high price, price premium for it. 
Uh, what else do I need to mention about the get box? So this is fully waterproof. You can dunk it. Uh, this comes with a map switch included and uh, it has traction control, Wi-Fi, barrel sensor. It's a full replacement. It also allows data logging if you get the full software suite. You're changing fuel and ignition when you plug this in and uh, you can make user field changes with the app. There's no dials. You're not changing anything here. You have to do it through the app. And let me let me jump over to another flavor of getting this box. So Athena has marketed a second version of this, and uh, I forget what they call it. I think it's just the Get RX One versus this kit with all these little features as the Pro, the Pro kit. So if you just get it as the Get RX One, what you what you get is just this guy. It's just the ECU. And so they're trying to compete directly with the Vortex on price point. No map no uh, Wi-Fi, but for some guys, they don't need that. They don't want all those bells and whistles. They don't want to, they don't care or want to talk to their bike on their phone, and they probably, they're not going to make any changes, feel changes. And so for $7.49 for just the box versus the $6.99, so 50 bucks more. So for 50 bucks more, you get a faster computer and a barometric pressure sensor with the capability of, in future, if you wanted to add the Wi-Fi box, that's a a la carte item you can get. You can add the TC knob as an a la carte. You can add the map switch as an a la carte. So you can trick this up by adding on those individual components later if you wanted to. And so that gives you, I'm a great video maker, aren't I? So that gives you the option to get this at a price point that was pretty comparable to the Vortex and then have expandability. But I think in my opinion, um, the, the the barrel sensor that's totally a game changer and the speed of the processor those are two reasons why for my money i've got to get i used to have a vortex on the bike got rid of it well i used to have dobex you know i've done everything i've sort of gone through the generations of these this equipment and sort of the iterations of all these things i used to have uh, the dobex on my bike and still recommend them now let me let me say this even though i have a personal preference which i'm telling you now uh, I have not, I don't have anything bad to say about any of these boxes. Not one of these options are bad or wrong or better or worse. There are YouTube guys out there who will tell you that um, some of these are better or, or uh, without naming any names, but there's a guy who, who puts down the vortex, says I don't sell it anymore, gives reasons why he stopped selling it, whatever. I'm not that guy. I am happy to set you up with any of these options because I think they're all great and they all have their own merits um, in the scale of price, performance, features. There's uh, there's there's an option for everybody. I think they're all great. I've run them all. I have owned them all, tested them all. Right now we're in the process of doing a total head-to-head -head against all of these. We're going to take every single one of these options run them on the dyno, we're gonna give them to a couple of test test riders and myself, and we're gonna go out and run these um, and do a comparison and give you an idea of why we think you should maybe, um, depending on what you're after, get one or the other. So in my opinion, the Get is the one that I have on my bike because I just want all those features, I want the bells and whistles, I want the speed, um, and so for my money, that's what I'm running. But that is not to say that um, you should not seriously consider or get any of the other options. They're all, they're all fantastic. So if you have any questions or comments, message me. You can leave them here in this. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram. I think uh, the Instagram is uh, at Hobo Moped on Facebook. We have Facebook groups, and then you can find me as well there. We do Tech Support Tuesday. There's all kinds of things that's going on. Um, lots of ways to reach us so please do if we said anything wrong in here or if you want to update any of the information please let me know we try to get this as accurate as we can but i'm sure we make some research mistakes or there's just different things that we've overlooked or haven't talked about so leave those in the comments thank you for watching this um get out there and get some adventure later